All right, so what exactly is halushki? So at its core, it is dough and cabbage. Uh, in Europe, it's more traditionally uh, kind of like a dumpling situation. Over here, uh, egg noodle reigns supreme. So that's what we're doing today. Okay, so for our egg noodle, we're gonna start with about a cup and a half of flour. Now remember, this is more about ratios than it is about recipes. So as long as we hit the ballpark ratio of about one cup of flour for every two eggs, we should be pretty okay. Now we're gonna crack two eggs. And that third egg, oops. All I want is the yolk. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to kind of lobotomize the top half, pour that into my hand, and just kind of give it a back and forth a couple times until we have this nice, beautiful yolk. Boop. Lastly, I'm gonna add just a tiny knob of butter for flavor and richness. So with a fork, I'm just going to break apart the egg and incorporate just a wee bit of flour at a time until it comes together in one nice homogenous dough. If it looks loose, I'm gonna add more flour. Yeah, you can see it's forming kind of little flaky bits, almost like a, like a pie dough. So, I'm gonna start working this by hand now. What we're doing is we're moisturizing that flour and starting to develop the gluten. This stage is gonna look crumbly, and that's okay. Okay, now that it has formed kind of a singular mass, we're gonna go right out of the bowl and onto the table with just a little flour, not a whole lot. A little dabble, do you? Yeah. <sighs> For kneading, we're gonna fold in half, press, turn, fold in half, press. And we're just gonna keep on kind of folding it into itself like a Damascus steel. Now before I let it rest, I'm just pulling all the edges into the bottom and leaving the top as undisturbed as possible. This little fella's going into the fridge for about half an hour to let the gluten relax. Now, I like to take a slightly dampened paper towel and prevent it from losing any additional moisture. And those are the fridge paintings. Um, Yep. All right, dough's resting. Let's start some choppy chop for the halushki. So we're gonna start by halving and then quartering our cabbage. Now it's got this little connecty bit. So we're gonna come in at an angle and cut just the core out. And that too is going in our in our scrappy bucket. Thanks for coming. Now that we have a quarter, we're just gonna cut it nice and thin. Okay, better angle. So, core, excess leaf. We're just gonna turn it. Then, nice circular motions. Okay, so this time, oops. So we're only cutting the top off, the bottom, got these little fuzzy bits. We're gonna cut a little bit of that off so we're not running dirt through the onion. Cut that in half, peel. We're gonna do the same rainbow technique, except we're not gonna go through the back. We're gonna leave that attached. So, same deal. Now I'm just aiming slightly towards the center as I'm slicing. Now I'm just gonna turn it. Some people like to go through it once. I like to leave it in this state. Here we have a nice, pretty consistent dice, honestly. Okay, so when measuring garlic, just do what the heart tells you, you know? Never in my life have I measured garlic. 
Now, if I'm making a comfort dish, I really like to see the garlic. So I'm just going to slice it fairly thin. Nothing too, too crazy. This way I see it, I taste it, uh, I love it. So like everything else, uh, got my, my grippy hand. And then, since this is so small, the tip of my knife doesn't even have to leave the cutting board. I'm going to store the garlic separate from the onion. Don't want to put those in at the same time. All right. Lastly, some nice herbs. We're just running our knife through it, nice and gentle. I also bought too many green onions, so we're gonna add a little bit of that, because it can't hurt. The bottom hairy bit off this, you can actually replant, get a whole new one for free, how about that? Split it in half. Uh, green part, we're going to slice and add to the onion. Greens, we're gonna slice super thin and add with the herbs. So the tops are a little bit more mild, more vegetal. Um, great for soups as well. Whereas the bottoms are a little bit more pungent, a little bit more similar to eating like an onion or a ramp, but still packed with flavor. Okay. So, bottom's going with the onions. Yeah. Top's going with the herbs. We're ready to rock. Softened up a little bit, and when we press, it leaves an indent. So it means that gluten has relaxed a little bit. So I'm just dusting my counter one more time. And we're going to cut this down into a more manageable piece. Probably about half of this. Okay, really nice texture there. Love it. So the bad news, I've lost my pasta machine, but the good news, we don't really need it. Roll this out. Okay, so that's about as thin as I want it. And the shape is okay. Sturdy wine bottle will do the trick just fine. Uh, keyword is sturdy. Once again, and I cannot stress enough, don't go quite as hard. Don't want any emails. Flip, twist. Rinse and repeat. So if it if it tightens back up, uh, that means that it hasn't rested long enough. So just stick it back in the fridge. Now for the shape, we're gonna do something kind of crazy here. So I'm gonna get the thickness that I want. Pretty dummy thick. Right? Then, instead of just, you know, cutting a, a flat noodle, I'm gonna come at a hard angle. Like a nice, uh, paysan would be... Like a trapezoid, basically. Right? And these diamonds are going to, uh, eat really nicely. Now we're gonna toss these in a little bit of flour to prevent stickage. Nice and gentle. Gentle-ish. Okay, choppy chop is chopped. Noodles are noodled. Now we can get ready to cook. This is all the dry goods that we need. Oh, so get a large pot of water on. We'll get that to a boil. Season aggressively. Maybe once, maybe twice. Now we'll get our biggest and fattest pan. Get that heating on, oh, about medium. Now for what we're doing, really any semi-sweet white wine will do, but I prefer Liebfrau-Milch. Now that our water's up to a nice simmer, we can start sweating our vegetables. 
starting with our onion and green onion, then our garlic, lastly our cabbage. So, bloop, in you go. And if it's making that much noise and it's super aggressive, we're just gonna turn it down a little bit. Doot. Another thing, we're gonna take it off the heat, swirl it, flip it. To saute actually just means to jump in French. As it cooks, I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. I'm gonna season as we go. I'm not gonna lie, I had my pan a little bit too hot, so we, we took a little bit more color than we'd like, but that's okay, it's gonna be quite all right. Next in is the garlic. Garlic is in, last in the pool is our cabbage. And with that, we're gonna add just a little bit more fat. In this case, canola. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna let these get to know each other, you know. So this has been cooking for about a minute now. So here comes the sneaky part. We're going to add a lot of our flavoring on top and then we're gonna deglaze with our white wine. So, our sneaky mushroom powder, heaping helping of whole grain mustard, touch of salt, and in goes the water. While that's simmering, we're gonna cook our nudes. This is fresh pasta, so, oh, give or take a minute. Let's set up our strainer in the sink. This is what we're working with. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Okay, so it still has a little bite, and that's a great thing, because we're gonna cook it further in the pan. Back into the cabbage business. This has had a couple minutes to kind of come together. So we're going to introduce our noodles. Now as this cooks, we're gonna add a little knob of butter, probably eh, about a tablespoon. We're gonna fold in our herbs. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna mix that together. Okay, maybe more butter. Now's a great time to taste for seasoning. Ooh, P.S. Never waste your butter spoon. Get it in there. <laughs> also use a little acid. So we're going to kill the heat. And we're going to come in with a little bit of white wine vin. Just a splash. Doot. Now as we're adjusting, biggest things we're checking for are fat, acidity, seasoning. Uh, those are really going to be what makes the dish. Okay, more butter. Might not be the prettiest girl at prom, but she got a great personality. So the mustard gives it a really nice tang. It's not uh, overly rich, which not knocking on your babushka, but you know, sometimes it eats a little fatty. Uh, so the wine and the mustard really cuts through that nicely. I hope this dish warms your soul as it does mine, and as always, happy cooking.